Shalom and welcome to Jerusalem Studio. Israel's northern neighbor, Lebanon, is powerless in more than just one sense. While foreign Iranian influence and deep economic distress rooted in political corruption threatens the once-termed Switzerland of the Middle East with plausible disintegration, such a reality would in inevitably pose a grave security risk for Israel. To analyze the current situation in Lebanon and expected implications for the region, we're joined from central Israel by Colonel in Reserve Dr. Anan Webi, who is a senior fellow at the Institute for Counterterrorism at Reichman University and a lecturer at Haifa University as well. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you. Also joining us from elsewhere here in Jerusalem is Dr. Neil Bohms, who is a research fellow at the Moshe Dayan Center at Tel Aviv University. Thank you for joining us as well, sir. And with us here in the studio is our TV7 analyst and host of TV7's Watchmen Talk, Mr. Amir Oren. Amir, give us a update on the latest with regard to Lebanon in light also of the uh, new government there uh, taking hold, but uh, an incompetent government, it seems. Well, you mentioned the government and, you know, one of uh, the worst and least enviable jobs in the region uh, in recent years has been prime minister of Lebanon. Only uh, recently, uh, we've learned that the uh, murderer of uh, Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri uh, 16 years ago is probably uh, going uh, to get away with murder. And uh, his two accomplices are still at large. The prosecution is trying to appeal. But Lebanon being what it is, um, under the control of Hezbollah, uh, there is a slim chance that justice will be done. And the current prime minister, Najib Minkati, um, made a fortune in his private uh, dealings, but as a public figure, he's uh, not so fortunate. Obviously, the um, uh, Lebanese economy is in shatters. The Lebanese currency uh, has collapsed. There is no uh, petrol uh, for uh, Lebanese citizens to move around. Hezbollah is trying to make uh, this uh, dire situation better for itself by distributing oil which it uh, has gotten uh, from Iran. But until and unless corruption is rooted and Hezbollah is brought under control, and both of these efforts do not seem uh, to uh, be bearing uh, fruit, Lebanon will still be on the verge of collapse, and perhaps even deeper. And as you mentioned, if it uh, is disintegrating, Israel could be deluged by workers uh, unemployed from the north or other desperate people, in addition to the usual security risks posed by both Hezbollah, the Shiite uh, movement, and Palestinians residing in Lebanon. Not to forget, of course, that Hezbollah's oil, which it uh, received from Iran, was initially uh, brought to uh, the Banyas port in Syria in order to avoid the U.S. sanctions on Lebanon proper, a request from the Lebanese government at the time, and then transported via land border uh, to Hezbollah. Uh, from what I hear, it didn't reach far from the Baqa Valley uh, Hezbollah stronghold. But with that being said, uh, Dr. Wehabi, I'd like to ask you, uh, Prime Minister um, Kate is uh, a person who uh, grew up and uh, uh, became uh, stronger from within the Sunni community in Tripoli, in the north of Lebanon, which is not necessarily uh, under Hezbollah influence as much as other parts of the country. Uh, nonetheless, uh, in order to play the political game in Beirut, you need to have some sort of uh, communications with this uh, Shiite organization, uh, which is, of course, also controlling Amal and other organizations in that country. Uh, give us a little bit of an understanding. To what degree uh, is this new technocratic government, quote unquote, able to function for that matter? Yeah. Uh, first of all, we remember that it's not the first technocratic uh, government uh, um, that tried somehow to stabilize the situation in, in Lebanon. The, the last one just failed to do the job and then they moved on. Uh, there was a vacuum, political vacuum in Lebanon. Uh, it's not the first time that Lebanon is witnessing such a, a political uh, crisis, but uh, here, together with the worst ever economic crisis in Lebanon, 
uh, and the very bad uh, conditions that the uh, the uh, Lebanese are living right now, and together with the uh, regional uh, challenges that we are all watching uh, and hoping for a new uh, political and military order um, after the, uh, uh, the the problems that we are watching in the neighboring countries. Uh, here, Lebanon is trying again to da- to come with a new formula of a, a pragmatic way to stabilize the country from inside. Mikati, uh, that uh, was in the past uh, prime minister, is a, is a Lebanese Sunni, and his loyalty is first of all to Lebanon. He knows the situation, he understands, and we can, uh, when we analyze his speeches and his declarations, we see that he is trying to avoid a further uh, a collapse of Lebanon trying to bring to the table a rivals of, of yesterday in Lebanon and to put aside the external influence uh, from regional forces like uh, the Gulf states and others that were much more um, influential in the case of Hariri as prime minister. His loyalty is to Lebanon and I'm afraid his job is a bit difficult to be achieved while Hezbollah's loyalty is first of all to Iran before Lebanon itself. Indeed, Dr. Bombs, your perspective on this, also bringing into the picture the fact that the first trip Bukati has made was to Paris, to the Elysee Palace, to meet with French President Emmanuel Macron, of course, uh, uh, the person in charge of trying to accumulate uh, international support for a uh, potential bailout. But reforms are necessary to bring about such a plan, including by the International Monetary Fund and uh, other global institutions, something that uh, doesn't seem very viable at this stage if we look at the political construct despite this new government. Uh, True, and this is uh, really what the prime minister had attempted uh, to do and and at least create the beginning of uh, conversations uh, with the international institutions trying to gain some uh, support uh, from uh, uh, from French uh, and then potentially from uh, others and in a way trying to do the impossible and, and create the balance. Look, Lebanon is constantly in a flux. Uh, there are about 13 months uh, uh, before the terms of uh, President Taun um, will, will be over uh, and Lebanon is constantly uh, looking for its direction. Uh, it, it is clear to anyone who is in the uh, lead uh, in, in Lebanon that it's very difficult to create a consensus. We've seen it even uh, recently uh, and now again with the maritime border. Lebanon desperately needs uh, an agreement uh, that will enable it, for example, to develop some of its reservoir uh, that potentially can bring at least long term uh, financial gains uh, from the sea. But for that, it needs an agreement with Israel. And for that, it needs uh, the government and the Hezbollah, pro-Hezbollah factions to also agree. Uh, That seems uh, very far uh, from the current uh, trajectories. Uh, And it means that uh, the influence uh, of uh, other foreign actors on Lebanon uh, is likely again to increase. When Lebanon is depleted, uh, the same... uh, uh, it basically strengthened the positions of those who are willing to put uh, money inside. That certainly enabled Iran to continue uh, to strengthen its influence. It enabled Hezbollah to strengthen its influence. Um, and that uh, in turn created the scenario uh, in, in where that camp, despite some of the losses it suffered, still um, is strong enough to basically block uh, any serious move uh, for, for a serious uh, uh, reform or political change in Lebanon. Uh, this deadlock is something that Lebanon has experienced for, for quite some time. Uh, the, the difference really in the last uh, few years uh, that it has seen that we have a depleting economy with people uh, not able to find uh, gas for their cars, uh, with uh, depleted uh, hospitals, uh, no medications, uh, people were trying without success to get formula milk. Uh, things uh, and pictures that are very, very difficult. Usually in these types of cases, uh, some of these pictures may end up convince the IMF to eventually, you know, come in and offer another relief, something that may be uh, create a temporary relief to some degree uh, as some of the fuel uh, for some of the neighborhoods at least. Uh, but that's far away from actually sorting the issue of Lebanon, uh, which is uh, becoming uh, another, unfortunately, uh, failed state in the region. 
Indeed, and not to forget, of course, that uh, the oil that came into Hezbollah's uh, uh, depots, if you will, were actually intended to maintain its capacity to react also, first of all, to Israel, but also to allow it to function militarily elsewhere, uh, also vis-a-vis, -vis, of course, the Syrian uh, area of operations. But, uh, Mr. Owen, when we look at the whole picture, to what degree is Lebanon truly on the brink of collapse? Well, you know, the um, basic uh, uh, formula or equation um, on which Lebanon uh, was founded or gained its uh, independence uh, from um, France and uh, indirectly from Syria um, is no longer valid. Um, it is still the case that the president and the army chief are Christian, mostly Maronite, the Speaker of Parliament is Shiite, and the Prime Minister is Sunni, as was mentioned regarding Hariri and now uh, Mikati. But the wild card is Hezbollah. Hezbollah is uh, Shiite, and uh, Hezbollah, of course, um, has as its main raison d'etre uh, being the shield of Lebanon. Shield from what? From whom? From Israel. But Israel has no designs on Lebanon. Israel defensively invaded Lebanon in 1982. It has withdrawn 21 years ago. There is no real reason for Hezbollah. And it invaded not because of the Lebanese, because of the Palestinians. The Palestinians and the Shiites backed by Iran and because of the coincidence of the Iranian revolution taking place only a short time earlier, the Hezbollah, first Amal and then Hezbollah, took over as the major power center. Hezbollah should, of course, be disarmed. It will not do so as long as Iran is calling the shots. So it's very, very elaborate. And uh, if uh, France, uh, for instance, can pull some strings in the uh, nuclear deal talks, and at the same time demand that Iran stop uh, using Hezbollah against Israel and uh, uh, abusing Lebanon, that will be uh, a great help. Dr. Wahabi, your view on that? I think that uh, right now uh, Hezbollah is in a, a very deep dilemma. He tried to, to maintain the two circles of being part of their uh, resistance, uh, as he calls that, being an armed uh, wing in Lebanon, um, claiming that he is continuing to uh, defend Lebanon, uh, but he, uh, his loyalty is to Iran and he's part of the Iranian agenda on the other hand. And those two circles right now are contradictory to each other for the first time. And Hezbollah has to, uh, to put it in front of the Lebanese that are rising uh, fingers uh, and they uh, trying to uh, uh, to, uh, to improve the situation and uh, to, uh, to start a new hope in, uh, in Lebanon, knowing that Hezbollah is an obstacle and not helping the Lebanese anymore. And uh, in this stage, Hezbollah does not want uh, any more confrontations, neither in, uh, in Syria or uh, nor in, uh, in the, our northern borders uh, uh, with Israel, because he knows that it might be uh, leading to um, undesired escalation right now. His internal front is much more risky right now um, than all others, and he is still involved because of the Iranian agenda in a lot of uh, other terrains in the Middle East, in Syria, in Yemen, and in other parts of the world. He has a bad economic situation. He cannot uh, um, uh, recruit any more uh, uh, people to his um, uh, um, human resources are limited right now. And he is trying to be part of the solution without putting aside the Iranian agenda. And it's very, very uh, complicated. Indeed. Let's uh, bring into the picture also the uh, potential negotiations now or the resumption of negotiations on demarcating the maritime border between Lebanon and Israel. Uh, the United States is sending a new envoy to the region to try and uh, bring about a certain uh, glimpse of diplomacy. Of course, um, multiple occasions in the last year uh, failed miserably because of new uh, equations that were, were brought to the table by the Lebanese, uh, of course, with the directives of uh, Hezbollah, which uh, we all know where they get their directives from. But 
Dr. Bombs, how do you view this complexity? So Amos uh, Hochstein, uh, who uh, is a diplomat uh, that worked uh, in the corridors of Capitol Hill for two decades, also a businessman and somebody who worked in Congress under the Obama administration, is now being sent by the Americans as the new uh, envoy uh, to try and renew the uh, maritime negotiations. Uh, about a year ago, uh, when the last round of the negotiations uh, ended, uh, we were in an interesting situation. Uh, the, uh, it seems that the reports indicated uh, that the two uh, sides are actually coming uh, to a, a potential agreement. Uh, but at the very end of it, uh, and then due to pressure coming from uh, the pro Hezbollah circles and the Lebanese government, uh, the Lebanese uh, have actually changed their uh, initial position and now declaring that the area in dispute is almost three times as large uh, as the area in dispute that actually came to the negotiations. Lebanon, uh, I would say, needs uh, uh, these negotiations more than Israel. Uh, Israel is already extracting uh, uh, gas uh, uh, from the fields of Tamar and Leviathan. There are some also fields in the north when Israel develops and Lebanon complains that they may fall within its own territory. Lebanon has not started uh, extracting or developing these sites, and it's going to be very difficult for it. Uh, of course, it will need a foreign uh, companies to do so uh, without uh, an agreement over the, the maritime uh, uh, border. Uh, but again, not reaching an agreement is an agenda of uh, Hezbollah. And now Amos Hochstein is going to be sent to try and uh, uh, negotiate. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I think, uh, another round uh, that's going to be very, very difficult. The Lebanon, Lebanon very much needs it. If he will be able to, to move the, this needle, it's going to be a very significant achievement. Uh, for Lebanon, on the one hand, who uh, uh, may be able to uh, uh, see at least long-term prospects of economic development, and also because there's going to be another agreement uh, between Lebanon and, and Israel, and certainly a, a loss for the Hezbollah camp. I wish uh, that we'll, uh, in one of the next programs, we'll be able to report that this had actually happened. Indeed. Mr. Owen, I'd like to hear you on this, but of course, bring into the picture also the fact that uh, former Energy Minister Yuval Steinitz, uh, at a time when he still was Energy Minister, spoke with you in this very studio about this matter and uh, spoke also about the complexities of, of dealing with a unstable regime that doesn't really know how to move forward. How do you see that uh, uh, actually materialize now when there is a new government in Israel? It, of course, wants to ensure that Lebanon gains some kind of uh, economic relief for uh, bolstering its its reliance on stability in order to make this happen. Is this now uh, better when we're talking about prospects or is this not going anywhere again? Well, you know, this issue brings to mind the old debate about uh, desalinization. Uh, is it uh, cost effective? to invest in such uh, facilities? And the answer was, there is, contrary to popular belief, there is no shortage of water. There is a shortage of money. If you have enough money, you can buy water directly or indirectly for whatever amount um, uh, you need. Uh, one has to, to contrast the uh, micro and the macro in this uh, particular problem of the maritime uh, dispute. Of course, if Israel insists um, on uh, its uh, end of the bargain, uh, looking at the micro problem, it may be justified. But macro, it is in Israel's interest to let the Lebanese have something to lose. And the more they have to lose, the less risk there is of Hezbollah starting a new war. And if they do start and they lose, their gas field, it's their uh, problem. So the question is, if Israel gives up, even though it does not have to, um, some percent, uh, rather than 54 to 46, it will be 58 to 42 or whatever, can it be compensated by the United States? As it actually is being compensated on military aid, for instance, Iron Dome or what have you. There can be a trilateral formula here where everybody wins. Dr. Webby, your take on this? Yeah, I think the, uh, the natural gas in the Mediterranean right now gives a big chance for Lebanon 
to come out of the, uh, this crisis, this um, uh, economic crisis, and the, the Lebanese know that. Uh, we could see uh, through the negotiations that the Lebanese government uh, those days, lately, wanted very much to get an agreement with Israel and to uh, somehow to get a win-win situation where they can uh, gain for uh, their benefit also uh, the gas that is so much uh, uh, desired right now for, for Lebanon. But unfortunately, Iran and Hezbollah stood behind the government. And at um, uh, the end of the day, uh, we did not uh, succeed to uh, to get an uh, agreement. Uh, this goes back to the um, all the mechanism of the politics when Israel is part somehow, directly or indirectly, uh, of this game. And here, uh, Israel is watching the, the scenarios in Lebanon. And they, uh, if we are talking about the uh, yesterday political order that is still existing anyhow, uh, of course, uh, all the countries here in the region want to weaken Hezbollah and uh, that this organization will choose to reduce uh, its military activities and um, uh, adventures uh, through the region. Uh, but uh, um, on the other hand, there might be uh, a new dilemmas where uh, Lebanon uh, can move a step ahead uh, and that uh, the collapse of Lebanon can lead this country to a, a new opportunity where a, a new politics can be uh, get there together with the involvement uh, of the region and of, uh, uh, of course, the superpowers. Um, and it uh, could be a new Lebanon without uh, uh, Hezbollah and without at least without the military wing of Hezbollah, that Hezbollah integrates uh, again in the um, Lebanese uh, politics. And there is a lot of so resources that can uh, contribute uh, to the uh, Lebanese economy. We're drawing near to the end of the program, and I'd like to hear more on uh, Israeli preparedness for uh, if things go south. Uh, Dr. Baum, how do you take that? Well, the uh, Home Front Command and the IDF uh, have been preparing uh, for uh, the third uh, Lebanon war uh, or a scenario uh, that uh, may emerge uh, uh, if Lebanon will indeed collapse and if uh, the Lebanese and the Syrian uh, arena uh, will uh, deteriorate into a, a scenario of uh, a conflict uh, that uh, will take this Iranian attempt to encircle Israel. Uh, this is a, a, a serious issue. And um, perhaps uh, if we're now drawing the, the loose analysis, uh, analogy to, to Afghanistan, a place in where the Americans have invested 20 years in attempt to stabilize the country and receive the very difficult results. We've seen Lebanon as well, 20 years uh, with $5 trillion of investment in trying to stabilize the country, which now, and, and stabilizing the, the Lebanese military, which is now uh, uh, seems to be weaker uh, than the pro-Iranian militia there, Hezbollah. Uh, if Lebanon further collapses and the uh, non uh, uh, aligned uh, forces uh, become uh, more uh, integrated with the arsenal that they have against Israel. Israel, of course, needs to prepare, which is, of course, why Israel is taking great interests in uh, all of these uh, dynamics uh, and not that it can do much uh, to change the reality mm -hmm. in Lebanon, but certainly looking at very watchful eyes with some hope that uh, the moderate uh, voices uh, will be able to bring Lebanon uh, into a better uh, route moving forward and being prepared. Uh, for uh, an additional uh, escalation or deterioration. Dr. Webby, your take on this, you have about one minute. We are witnessing a shifting point in the Middle East and Lebanon in particular. And I think that uh, the Lebanese uh, problem should be solved uh, together with the new nuclear uh, agreement that uh, the uh, United States of America uh, is conducting right now. And uh, I'm optimistic that uh, Lebanon will be stabilized. Mr. Owen? Well, the Lebanese seem to be uh, wary of civil wars and uh, corruption and incompetence. The problem is, uh, while there are 
uh, what you may call a regional or native uh, Lebanese, there are outside forces. First, the Palestinians, which started coming over in force, not the refugees of 1948, but those expelled from Jordan in the late uh, 60s and after Black September of 1970, and Iran as uh, the one pulling the strings behind uh, Hezbollah. If those outside forces could be neutralized and the corrupt elite ousted by revolution or by some outside force, let them go on exile to their treasures hidden in Switzerland or wherever, and let the Lebanese elect a new leadership, then I could join the uh, optimism voiced here. Not to forget, of course, the vigorous campaign that was uh, uh, initiated in the uh, early 2010, 2011, when they were trying to advance nationalistic uh, ideals of Lebanon, but loyalties lie in the sec uh, sectarian atmospheres, unfortunately. This is not going to change anytime soon, so Lebanese is not necessarily a proper Lebanese, but this is all the time that we have for today. I'd like to thank Dr. Wehbe, Dr. Bohms, and Mr. Owen for being part of today's panel. I'd like to thank our viewers as well, and we will see you next time. needs a soul, an ideal, and the political will to serve this ideal. However, years after these words were asserted, Europe remains deeply divided, challenged by those who seek to assert neoliberal ideals as the only way forward, versus those aspiring to preserve the continent's historic Christian conservative values. Is Europe able to contend with these challenges and many more? For more of TV7's productions and editorials, we invite you to visit our website at www.tv7israelnews.com.